Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to make a simple, small, lightweight chicken tractor. And uh, for those that don't know what a chicken tractor is, it's really not a tractor in the sense that uh, it's propelled by anything other than your own power. And what it is is just something, a uh, temporary enclosure you put your chickens in. And you move it around your yard a little at a time so it gives them access to, uh, you know, different bugs and grasses. And uh, at the same time they fertilize your lawn or wherever you put the chicken tractor. So, uh, and I don't usually do this. I don't usually write a blueprint or a materials list or, or draw any diagrams or anything. I just usually make stuff right out of my head. But I thought I would show you the process I go through in my head uh, when I build things. And this is it. And I just thought I'd draw it out and show you my idea. And by the time this project is over, well, it may not look exactly like I have it drawn, but uh, it will be very similar. So uh, this is the left and right side. It's three foot tall. And the reason I chose three foot is because I'm going to buy six foot tall chicken wire and cut it down the middle. And that'll save me a little bit on cost. So uh, I have two of these, left side and right side. This is the rear end, the back side. It's going to be six foot wide, three foot tall. This will be the front end. And I've got a little door here that will open this way. And the reason is the door of my chicken coop opens that way. So I'll be able to open the door on the chicken coop, open the door on this, and it'll be sort of like a uh, tunnel leading right in here and you just throw something in there they want and they'll all go in there after it. And this door will be two feet wide and three feet tall. And uh, it's six foot. And this is the top. Uh, six by eight. And back here I've got a two foot wide door that will uh, open this away so you can reach down in there and put food and water and uh, I have a rough estimate of a materials list just a ballpark figure I, I figure I can build this all for uh, between 150 and 175 thanks for watching as I build it I'll put the videos up but this is just the beginning Alright, I'm going to start my chicken tractor and uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to build this a little differently than the way I usually build stuff since I'm, I'm having so little time off. I actually only have a half a day off today. I got to go to work this afternoon. So uh, I'm going to use the assembly line process of building this. I'm just going to get all my pieces cut and uh, I'm going to start with these uh, gussets, braces, corner braces, and uh, I need 40 of them, and they're all going to be one foot long, so uh, what I did was just put a vice grip here, that's my one foot mark from here to there, where it'll be cut, and then I'll cut my 45s on them, I could cut all my 45s uh, you know as I cut them to the proper length but uh, I don't want to stop and take time to figure out how to do that <laughs> that's the simple truth so I'm gonna cut them all at the one foot length and then come back and cut my one my 45s on them and uh, that's the first thing I'm gonna do and then I'm going to cut all my uprights I haven't counted them yet but I'll get these uh, one foot pieces cut and the 45s cut on them and show you my progress all right I got I got them all cut to one foot lengths and I got about uh, oh about half of them cut uh, with my 45s on each end and uh, I'm going to show you how I do that but I'm going to uh, mount this camera first all right uh, this is uh, just how I do this so I don't need any advice from the experts This uh, 
the saw has a laser that shows you where it's going to cut. And what I do is cut the saw on and then adjust this according to where the laser says it'll cut. So uh, here we go. You might want to watch your volume. I don't know how loud this saw is going to be. Hold on, let me zoom you in so you can see the laser. That's how I do it. And there we have both ends cut at a 45. Okay, there's 40. Now, I'm going to cut my uprights. And uh, since this represents both the left side and the right side, I need one, two, three times two for both sides so I need six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so I'm not cutting the door yet because I'm not sure if I'm gonna miter the corners of the door since I'm going to have these braces or whether I'm gonna do uh, uh, butt joints so I'm just gonna cut the twelve uprights but I want this to be three foot tall, so what I need to deduct from the length of these is the thickness of this top piece and this bottom piece, which should probably be three inches. So I'll be cutting these. Uh, uh, let me measure the thickness of these two first, and then I'll tell you what measurement this is. I'm going to try to do this around the camera. So here's my, uh, let's just say this is my upper piece and my lower piece. And what I want to cut now is the piece that goes in between these two. And I want it to come out three foot tall from the top of this to the bottom of this. So what I got to do together, that's right at three inches. I'm going to call it three inches. It's not quite, but that's close enough since I'm not building an airplane here. So, uh, That'll be 33 inches that I gotta cut these upright pieces here, and I need 12 of them at 33 inches. Uh, I forgot to mention earlier before I started cutting my one foot pieces that uh, these, uh, they're crap. So what I did was picked out the, uh, the ones with the biggest bows in them, since uh, I'm probably gonna use most of this. Uh, picked out the ones with the bows and warps and uh, I used them to cut my one foot pieces out of because uh, a bow over the course of one foot is really not going to be noticeable but it would if I used them for my eight foot stretches and uh, here's how crappy the wood is and let me tell you what the dirty SOBs did uh, wood nowadays has just gotten shamefully bad and these aren't just a little bad, these are just... Uh, that's just about unusable. And what they did was stack these, or the bad parts, or to the inside. See how nice this looks? Let me take one apart. Actually, that one's a good one, so I'm going to save these for my, uh, for my long stretches. There's one. See how they stack that to the inside? That section there is unusable. I mean, you could use it, but it's going to look like crap. And uh, same with this one. So what I'm doing is I'm finding the ones with those kind of bad spots, and I'm going to cut my uh, 33 inches, like you know, from the from here back this way. Try to get the good out of it that I can. I mean, I'm not going to throw anything away, but for this project, it's going to be outside, number one. Number two, it's going to be uh, two, by, you know, two by twos are not the 
the strongest things. I wanted to make this light for my wife to be able to move around while I'm at work. So I'm already up against uh, you know using two by twos plus being exposed to the weather. So I want to make it as solid as I can out of the the best of the two by twos. Uh, just wanted to show you the quality of wood and what you got to do to get good wood out of you know what you get and how sneaky they are about turning all the bad sides to the inside of the bundle. So the only way you can find out if you're getting good or bad is to cut them open and pick through them. And you know they don't really like you to do that. I have when I when I really needed uh, you know three or four really good ones. But uh, I just thought I'd show you that before I get started. All right, there's my uh, 12 upright, 33 inches. Now I'm going to cut my uh, width, which is six foot. So uh, I need one, two, three, four, five, this is the top, five, six, seven. I won't be cutting them from my door yet because uh, I'll have to wait till I get this put together and there's there's such a variable with this wood and my cutting that until I get this together uh, I won't measure the the pieces for the door. I do have these cut but uh, okay so that's seven six footers. Here we go. All right there's all my cut wood. Now I have time to do one more thing. Let me uh, move you forward here and explain you. All right. This is a uh, soft pine, and uh, it has a tendency to split when you drive screws into it. So you have to drill pilot holes. And uh, let me see how I can orient this where you can understand what I'm talking about. So when you have this at a corner, you would be screwing basically straight up and down this way. Let me show you. That is how the screw would go in, like that. And right about there also. So you have to drill a pilot hole through here, or else it'll split the wood. But what I'm going to do, because I've used stuff before and I know that it really is fragile, so you got to take a lot of precautions uh, against splitting the wood. I'm going to drill a hole slightly larger than the screw I'm going to use, which will be a drywall screw. And I'm going to use a washer uh, to back it with on the head of the screw. Here, I'm going to shut this off. I'll show you what I mean in two seconds. Okay. This is an 11 64th bit. And I'm going to be drilling this away, just like that. And I have a washer on the, on the back side of my uh, three inch drywall screw. And I have a spade bit that I'm going to drill just a little bit down in here uh, because I want when a screw goes in I want the washer to be flush like you know what I'm gonna have to show you I'm gonna do one and show you what I mean to do without putting this in a vise. Can you see what I'm doing there? Okay, what that's going to do is allow the washer to be square. Don't want to get in there. There we go. 
Tu sabe? Capish? Yes, dear. I'm doing the video. Is the coffee still out? I'm gonna have a cup of coffee. I'll be right there. Okay, so I'm gonna get all these done like that. The holes drilled. I'm probably even gonna get the drywall screws in with the washers just so when I get to putting things together I've got everything where I need them since I am working with such an extremely limited amount of time uh, I have to work uh, as efficiently as possible so uh, I'm gonna do all these just like that one both ends will have to be done like that and uh, I'm gonna upload this video and uh, see you next time I think I can probably uh, two more videos and I'll have this all together one will be the assembly and the other will be putting the chicken wire on or maybe three videos the uh, chickens going in and getting drug around the yard and fertilizing my grass and whatever else I decide to put the chicken tracker on thanks for watching have a great weekend okay uh, part three how to build a chicken tractor I got the front end and the rear end put together there's the rear end and uh, I had a little time today I got about an hour I can work on this I just got off of work but uh, I gotta go help a friend of mine get his riding mower running it's just a starter solenoid but uh, he doesn't know how to replace it and I have one and I can have it on there in a couple of minutes so I'm gonna go do that for him and this is the same friend that very soon or as soon as humanly possible I gotta get up underneath his house and uh, replace a couple of floor joists this is a older friend of mine retired on a fixed income and uh, has his handicapped daughter living with him and really can't afford to pay anybody to do it so as soon as I get a couple of days off back to back I want to get up under his house and uh, replace a couple of busted floor joists. They broke right in half. Right in the middle of his kitchen, too. Anyway, that's another story. That's another video, actually. So, uh, I didn't show you me building these, but I'm going to do the top, and uh, I'll show you how I put them together. I just wanted to show you those... Uh, pockets that I drilled for the screws and how they're working I just uh realized something as far as the uh, the length of my sides that I'm fixing to build uh, I want the top when I build the top I want the top to rest on this like that square square and flush but if uh, I build the top the same length eight foot as the sides what will happen is it will rest like this and I'll miss the top edge of this. I want to be able to screw these two together so, and, and there's no way you can do it if they hit like this and this is the way it'll look on the front edge of the top and the back edge of the top. So what I'm going to have to do on the horizontal pieces for my sides is cut the thickness of this off uh, times two so my top will will be flush with the front and rear edge of this I hope you I hope I explain that but uh, what I gotta cut is uh, three inches off all four of my horizontal side runs I'm gonna do that now okay I haven't been able to show you any actually actual building because uh, I couldn't hold it and screw these things in but my wife is holding on to one end for me so uh, I'm going to actually uh, show you how I do one here, or a couple anyway.
it. You gotta be clunky. Stop! Okay, there we go. Two sides. So uh, I need to make the top. Ho, 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 ho. Where are you going with that drill? I told you I needed the drill. That's my good drill. Okay, uh, I got to make the top and uh, then I got to put chicken wire on it. And I'm not going to do that and, uh, until after I make the top. And I'm going to put chicken wire in such a way, staple it on where when I put all these joints together that the edge of the chicken wire is going to be hid behind a joint that way the chickens don't get their eyes poked out and and nobody on the outside of the cage walks into the sharp pointy chicken wire believe me I have it's not it's not good so uh, that's all for now I won't put this video up I'll make the top and uh, get this sort of uh, put together in here just so you see what it looks like and uh, my door I gotta make my door for this and I gotta make my door for the top I still got a little work but uh, for uh, one hour I got a lot done oh and the whole time I was sitting here I just want to show you this dog he's sitting on one leg this dog is sitting on one I don't know how he's doing it how are you doing that you are an acrobat breezy He's so determined to be in my lap <laughs> that uh, he's willing to sit on one leg. That's funny. You're a funny dog. Yes, you are. Starter solenoid, but uh, he doesn't know how to... Okay. There's the two sides. There is the uh, front and rear. And there is the top. All I need to do now is make the, uh, the door that will go right here and the door that will go right there in the end piece. Whew. And uh, I'm going to upload this video. And tomorrow I'll have another couple hours off. I think I can build the doors, have the chicken wire put on, and put this together in, oh, two or three, maybe four hours. Because, uh, that's all I have after work and uh, by the time I get done working out here it's time for me I gotta go to bed at 6 between 6 and 7 to wake up at 2 okay I'm gonna upload this I was a little chatty in the very first clip I'm trying real hard not to be uh, so uh, so chatty so uh, just overlook it I'll get better thanks okay uh, I wanna <clears throat> make the doors and uh, but first I wanted to tell you I did have a design change slight design change on the top that uh, I didn't mention this right here has been added because uh, between that and that it's just it's six feet of expanse with no uh, cross member and I decided to put one there what I'm going to show you now is uh, we're going to make this door together and uh, I'm going to show you the whole process let me get you tightened up here Okay. So I'm going to measure the width and the height. The width is 24 and I want a gap on either side of the door so it'll open and close easier. I'm going to hinge it over here and it's going to open from this side. So uh, 
I'm going to make the width about 23 and 5 eighths. That'll give me about 3 sixteenths of a gap on either side. The height is 33. Plus I have to deduct the width of the top, the top and the bottom rail. So uh, that would be 30, and I want to leave a gap there also. So uh, I think I'll go about 29 and a half. Uh, let's go to the shop. We'll cut. No, I'm in the shop. I'm in the other shop, which is this way next door, where I have my saw, and uh, I'll show you how to cut them. Okay, I got everything marked. I'm going to make make my cuts. And I'm cutting these out here just because it gets sawdust everywhere. It's hard to clean my other shop. I can just take air hose and blow this one out. the other shop and uh, I'm going to drill my holes and the uh, these are the side rails and I'll be drilling my holes on the top and bottom of them screwing them together and putting my uh, corner braces in all right I got everything marked and cut and uh, now I'm going to drill my holes here's my corner pieces here I already got them cut drilled the screws in them now I'm going to drill these two upright pieces and uh, let me zoom you in a little bit. Yeah, I know my arm was blocking that. I'll, 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 I'll move on the next one, or uh, maybe you can see it if I just raise my arm up. started in here just because it's so much easier to to do without with just one hand.
That'll hurt your fingers after a while. just a little bit. Finish how to build something like that. Where's my cut? Here we go. 
Alrighty, I'm gonna build the other door. Okay, I always show my mistakes, and I'm fixing to show you. I made the door here, and uh, I was off by this much. <laughs> and I know what I did. I had already deducted the uh, three inches off of this. And uh, when I got out there to where I cut it, there was a pause between me measuring and me going to cut. It was a coffee pause. And I ended up at taking another three inches off of it, not realizing it. I'd already taken that off the measurement. So I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a three inch wide piece of plywood from here to here. And same thing on the bottom to fill that gap because I do not want to make this all over again. And I'm just about, I mean, you see the difference between this and this, this is treated. I had to go buy some more wood because the other wood was so crappy that uh, I just couldn't use most of it. Well, not most of it, but a good portion of it anyway. So there's my mistake on this project. Oh, and another minor design change. I added a, a centerpiece from this corner to this edge to that edge. And the reason is when I put my chicken wire on here and uh, pull it tight, it might bow these in. So I just put that there to keep that from, prevent that from happening. So there's my mistake on this project. Every project I make some kind of faux pas. That's French for screw up. And uh, that's it. But I already have a Brad fix. See, when you make these kind of mistakes, <laughs> you have uh, repairs in the back of your mind from years and years of making these kind of mistakes. Okay, I'm going to have another cup of coffee and contemplate this. Good morning, girls. Got a little something for you. I know it's a little early. I don't usually give you your scratch this early, but I'm here. You're here. Let's just get it done. What? Giving the girl some scratch. Coffee's still out? I'm going to have a cup. You going to sit? Okay, bon appetit. Manja. Okay, I got the chicken wire on. I got one hinge on. Uh, I'm just using hinges I had laying around. These aren't really the best hinges for this, but I've already spent too much money. So here's what you need to put hinges on. You got to drill a pilot hole, or that's an awl, a pointy awl. And uh, I'm gonna make a pilot hole with all. So here's what you do. Just, I'm just eyeballing this since this is just a chicken house. Chicken corrector. I'm gonna take the eye, the uh, scratch all. One second. I'm gonna put that behind the chicken wire. There we go. That's how you want to do that. And then you make a. Nope, I got you. I'm gonna put this one on up here too. So. Okay, you press the awl in, you make yourself a pile of hole, take your screw, you can make a pilot hole with a little drill too, but I just find it, when you have small pilot holes to do, it's just easier to do with a scratch awl. Okay, I'm going to put this one on up here, I'm just going to eyeball it right about the center. screw. What it is is the head sometimes gets stuff stuck in it and the screw driver won't go down into it. There we go. Now I gotta put my two more screws here and my two more screws here but I was just showing you how to 
how to do this. Now, I just eyeball this in the center. Let's just see how far off I am. From the center of that hinge to the center of this, it's 11 and a quarter. From the center of this to the center of that, it's 11 and three quarters. So I'm a half inch off on my eyeballs. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, I, I, I got something else I got to show you. Uh, you know what? I think I'll do it when I get this over onto the uh, front piece there. I've got that chicken wire on that too, and I'll be mounting this. And when I get over there, I'll, I'll show you something concerning corner brackets that I didn't tell you about. Okay, that's, that's on. And now uh, these corner brackets are to hold the door from falling in because if I didn't have these here, when I close the door, it would just go past the edge here. Uh, I made a little catch. Hold the door shut. All right, that was the hardest one. So uh, I got enough chicken wire to do the the back end, and that'll go pretty quick because I don't have a door to go around. And uh, I may have to buy some chicken wire for these two sides. I got enough six foot to do the uh, top. I don't think I have enough to do the two sides. So I may not have this done today, which is okay because it's supposed to rain. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. It's supposed to rain the next day. So chickens, I wouldn't want them in it anyway. All right. Well, there's the hardest one. I'm fixing to start on the back side. I'm just going to show you how I staple a chicken wire on. I'm just going to show you how I do one edge. This chicken wire here was six foot wide, and I took my uh, cutoff wheel and I cut down. Uh, half of it and, it, and it's on, the, on that end it's a real rough edge. This is the finished edge down here so I'm going to staple this finished edge first and then on the other end I'll pull it that way and flop the chicken wire over the top, wrap it over the top uh, of this back end piece because the top of the chicken tractor is going to come down on, uh, you can't quite see it, let me back you up a little bit. Okay, the top of the chicken tractor will come up here, so I'm going to fold this over the top, and uh, it'll have a nice, you know, finished looking edge up top there, and the wire will be hid from uh, people and chickens. So, uh, let me show you how I staple this on. Oh, I'm using a PowerShot Pro, which is absolute crap. This is my third one. Uh, I've sent them back to the factory. The very first time I had one go bad, just like a dozen staples and it went bad. And uh, I called the factory and they said, send it to us, we'll repair it. And what they sent me back was some beat up old stapler with uh, the handle was wore off of it. They sent me somebody else's old crap. So uh, I just locked myself out here. So I called them back and I said, what you sent me was somebody else's used junk. If you're not going to fix mine, don't send me somebody else's junk. Send me a new one or send me mine back. So they sent me another one and it was used. Uh, this is all warranty crap. So these are made in China. And uh, what they do is the stuff that's sent back for warranty, they just keep switching it around. This is my third one here. Let's see how long this lasts. All right. I'm going to uh, do some stapling.
putting these staples about oh two and a quarter inches apart. They don't need to be any closer than that on this on this edge here because uh, it's a long it, it's like double wired down here on the bottom edge. Okay, now I go on the top side here, and that's where I pull all these wrinkles out. I'll just show you one real quick. I know I'm probably boring a lot of people, but I know there's some folks out there that have never seen anything like this done, and I decided I was going to take a little more time on this video and, and show the some of the more detailed stuff. Okay, you see how I'm folding this over up top here? I'm not going to staple it up on this end. I'm going to staple it on this end first, but I want to get it really tight. And uh, about every foot, I go and pull it this way, staple it, and then I go in between each foot, pull it this way, staple it, and then in between that, and uh, I get it tighter and tighter as I do that down this way. And then I go to the ends and I do the same thing. I pull it as tight as I can get it that way, staple it, pull it as tight as I can get it to go that way and staple it. And then I come and cut all the extra off. So, uh, that's it. I'll uh, show you this when I get her done. Here's how I trim the excess off. It's a real time saver. Okay, this is the, the last uh, show of me putting the chicken wire on, because you've got the idea. Uh, the bottom edge is stapled right to the face, because that was the, the factory smooth edge. This end, I stapled it to the face, well done it, and uh, pulled it around the back, because the back of this is going to butt up against the sides this won't be seen the top I just fold it up over I'm gonna get that in a minute <laughs> it's Beverly I'm gonna call her back uh, the, the top is gonna set on top of this so this won't be seen and no one will get poked alrighty there's the front there's the back uh, I have enough of this scrap here to do that door and then uh, I'll see what I got left after that I May be able to finish this today, I don't know. All right. Everything takes longer than you think it's gonna take. All I got left now is the top. And I'm almost certain I'll have enough chicken wire. I'm going to make a couple of uh, additions to this. I'm going to add some wheels. Uh, Jason, his channel is 1952 Jeep. He has a chicken tractor with these wheels on it that when you want to move the chicken tractor, you pull this lever down and the wheels lift the chicken tractor up slightly, uh, enough to move the chicken tractor around. And I got to go. Look at his video, and I'm going to plagiarize. And then I'm going to make something where I can hang some water 
some feed and a couple of nesting boxes where I'll have access to it at the, the end there because the lift up door the horizontal door is going on that end and uh, that's it I'm gonna go ahead and upload this I th really thought I could finish this today but I'm not gonna have time all right we're getting there let me show you what I had to get I went to tractor supply and I bought six wheels they were six bucks each and uh, I'm gonna mount them using half inch by three inch bolts half inch watchers, washers uh, some nuts and uh, I'm gonna use that to cut some uh, corner pieces to fit and then uh, I'll drill half inch hole through them bolt the wheels on and then I got this tarp here that uh, I'm going to staple down across the top here to give them some shade and uh, if it happens to rain and they're in it you know it'll keep the rain off of them but uh, all right I'm going to uh, start cutting my corner pieces okay I got my four corner pieces cut out and I got the two pieces that will go in the center here and I'm working in it. it's a little cramped in here but uh, it's raining out and I don't want to work in the rain. Look at a dog laying out there in the rain. Lucy! Lucy! Come in out of the rain! There's uh, three inches from the center of this hole here to the edge of the tire and I don't want to leave a really big gap between the ground and the bottom edge of this and I'm thinking three quarters of an inch will be enough uh, to have enough tire sticking below the edge of here where it won't get hung up uh, but not high enough off the ground where things can get under it after my chickens so I'm drilling my hole two and a quarter inches from the bottom edge here that will leave three quarters of an inch of, of wheel sticking down below the the bottom edge of this and uh, I think that'll be enough and that's what it'll look like. Now I gotta do that five more times. And uh, I'll roll it out into the yard. Alright, this is the, uh, it's not quite finished. I, I had to put the uh, nesting box in there, a perch, and hang their water. But, uh, Come on, girl. I, uh, you know, that, that's kind of a small stuff. I, I'll show you that later when I get it done. I just wanted to, uh, I'm anxious to get them in here. This one, she's not afraid of nothing. She'll uh, climb up on one of these perches in here and take stuff right out of your hand. She'll let you pet her too. So there we have it. When I get them all in there, I'll uh, close them up and move it around. But uh, I would estimate that I've uh, got probably, probably uh, right at $200 into this. <laughs> My wife just gasped. I meant five bucks, huh? <laughs> well, that's probably, I would say $10 worth of lumber there. What happened? <laughs> yeah, $10. That's all I spent. Always... One more bird. Come on. She's always the last one. Oh. I got anywhere near her. And, uh, well, thanks for watching this project. I know it was a bit long, but uh, I decided I'd go into a little more detail. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll try to answer. On, Takes me a little while to get around to the comments sometimes because uh, <laughs> I don't have time to uh, get on the computer as much as I used to. And from my iPhone, I can't reply directly to comments. So, uh, can't do it at work either. Thanks for watching. Yeah, those are some happy girls right now. They've been wanting some of that grass for a while. <laughs>